they're almost identical. You think, what? what is going on here? It's crazy. And we have these two circuits which we can switch in. We can control it on the low ISO setting. We, can, we have a 4,000, 5,000 ISO setting in the low ISO setting. In the high ISO setting for low light, we have 4,000, 5,000, that goes up and up and up. But those 4,000, 5,000, which I'm about to show you, are exactly the same noise free signal. It's the 640 ISO, it's insane. Um, if you're not in log, sorry. sorry, just quickly for the S1. S1, there's been a lot of speculation online that the S1 is also quietly dual ISO. I have had no confirmation of that whatsoever. I am more inclined to think that they do a big piece of uh, noise reduction. Yeah. Around the four, four thousand. That's good actually, yes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the S18, wow, something else. Um, true dual ISO circuitry, like the Vary cam, uh, the 35 camera, which is uh, another very expensive signal camera. Uh, and Panasonic are renowned for their dual ISOs. When you're not in log and you're filming in normal picture profiles, like Rec 709 or standard profiles, or hybrid log gamma, or the Cine Light D style camcorder style gammas, um, we've got different native ISOs that have been tuned for those profiles. So for example, normal, you've got a native ISO of 100 in the low light, and then the high, you have a 640. And again, no noise, no uh, starting points. In V-Log, as I said, 640 and 4000. V-Log, the logarithmic curve capture to capture all the dynamic range of the sensors, 14 plus stops. Um, you use V-Log, and then you bring a LUT or a look or a grade into the camera or in post-production to uh, really fully bring back that colour and light luminance. Um, which you probably all are. You're all aware of what log is, I hope, yeah? Yeah? Good stuff. Do you know what log is, sir? We will be showing it. Very flat curve, very flat, it's grey almost. Oh, yeah, it it traps all the dynamic range. Like yeah, S-log is on Sony's, C-log on Canon's, we have V-log. Other cameras have their versions of the log. Our log curve is almost identical to the ARRI log curve. And that's why I found when mixing and matching using ARRI cameras with uh, the S1H, <coughs> wow, it's almost like having the same camera. You mean using the different formats for the same movie or the same? It, yeah, so I'm getting the same the look mix. between a, the, my B camera yeah. next to a 50 grand cine camera. Yeah. So I can see this being used in big, uh, big uh, production role. Uh, the B team or C, C unit, um, crash cameras, drones, or because it's technically approved now yes. by Netflix as an A camera and for small drone filmmakers. And um, Nick was just saying about drones, and in fact, if you go onto YouTube, you see that kept from a create film, um, and we are we commissioned four specific films. Just one more time, like that. We we commissioned four specific films to show off the skills of what the S1H could achieve. <coughs> and then we did also a behind the scenes one, and you'll see the S1H hanging off a massive grey octodrome, which was how they shot her on the headland. It was all shot on an enormous, enormous yep. um, octodrome, um, and on regular gimbals as well. Uh, but also the, the thing with, people often think the V-Log is only about grading and about color matching. It's actually, it is colour matching, but it's often used as much to, to work in a multi-camera setup exactly. as it yeah. is to do something clever with your camera. You can match a lot so, between other yeah. cameras, quite yeah. Yeah. much easier than doing a standard I'll program. turn that off. You start that again, I'll turn yeah. it off. I'll so I'm just going to show you, I mean, we might not be able to see it in the dark that well, but I mean, so my, I always do what's called a black cap test when we get a new camera. Because yeah. when they say, yeah, is the eyes and I'm an ambassador, but I'm a filmmaker first and foremost, and I know my cameras. Um, so, um, first thing I do, I'll put a cap on it, and look 